Today we're tying the Hope Silvery. Now I'm using Black Magic B4 and uh, B2 size hooks, and uh, this particular hook, this is a, a B2, which and that gives you a uh, uh, finished silvery, which is not, uh, you know, it's pretty close to the size of a real silvery. But you use uh, smaller hooks when the water's a bit clearer. The first thing I've done is I'm tying in a pair of grizzle tips rather and then I'm using tying in oval silver tinsel and then white chenille. Traditionally earlier on when this fly was tied they would have used flat tinsel of course but uh, the silver tinsel is just as good. After underbinding my hooks I like to uh, add a bit of head cement for extra strength. And the Hope Silvery is a great lure for matching the smelt that we get in our Canterbury Rivers, or better known as uh, silveries. And they smell very much like cucumber when you catch one, you rub it on your fingers, and hence the reason they're often called uh, cucumber fish and the Hope's uh, Silvery very much looks like a real smelt or a real silvery particularly when you see the two together once it gets a bit wet of course so the wing flattens down and it looks much more fish like and hence the reason here that I'm using rabbit pelt which I find much easier to tie and of course I, I also have a pretty much limitless supply of rabbit pelt. Now on the side, I've used this blue floss, or which is a kind of darning material, brand as anchor. I think it would also be used for uh, embroidery. It's readily available in this sort of pale blue. For silveries have a kind of, I suppose, a, a just a slight pale blue sheen on the side. It's important that you taper your strip of rabbit pelt so that you get a finer head as well as tapering at the rear makes the uh, pelt nice and sinuous once it gets wet as it's drawn through the water. Looks a little bit fiddly to begin with tying the Hope Silvery, having to trap that blue floss underneath there as well as tying on the pelt. But by pinching the pelt and the floss together with your thumb and forefinger on, on your left hand and pulling it tight, it makes the job much easier than it looks. separating the rabbit fur with a bodkin here, but that's not really necessary either. And each time I'm uh, brushing the hair upwards, prevent it from being trapped under the um, tinsel. This is certainly one of the best uh, sea run trout lures for use in Canterbury. Now I like to add a bit of mylar on the side. I've got this crinkled mylar, but the flat stuff just as good and I use it in pearl colour and it gives the lure just a little bit of sparkle. It's not really necessary. Now here we have peacock sword. And, uh, this makes the little fish or the smelt that we're trying to create here 
it makes it dark from the top going to the light on the underside so it'll be I suppose it kind of dark green if you like on, like on the top and then a bit brown and then a little blue and then pale or white underneath which is just the effect we're going for I don't know what Dave Hope he was the he was the bloke in Canterbury a oh, hundred years ago now who first came up with the Hope Silvery I don't know what Dave would have thought of me using rabbit pelt but as I say I, I find the rabbit pelt much quicker and easier to tie than, I, than using the traditional pale buff or uh, grizzle honey honey grizzle uh, heckle feathers so the colors are not a not a perfect match but it's it's near enough and when I apply the head cement to the finished fly don't just put it on the head let it run back a little bit further onto the body so it sort of stiffens and strengthens the whole thing up there and there we go there's the finished hope silvery the rabbit pelt version Very arty with the sunset and everything there. What a beauty. 